as a means of housekeeping. Uh, if you have a phone with you, please silence it for the respect and honor of the family. Today, accidentally, we don't want any phone calls uh, during the service. We will be recording this service um, to be shared later on YouTube for your convenience as well. We have a restroom available for you in the front foyer, and we also have a nursery facility available through this door, and you're welcome to go through there and use it if needed. Your children are welcome to sit with you during this service. Mr. James Robert Fisher, 58, of Clinton, passed away on Tuesday, March 30th at Wake Medical Center after a long, hard battle of 40 days with his wife and son by his side. Mr. Fisher was a native of Sampson County and the son of Robert and Shirley Gore Fisher. None of us here want to be here today. And yet we find ourselves gathered together in memory of some of you call him J.R. I knew him as Robbie Fisher. You will hear me say this several times. But there are no words in any language to adequately express the feelings or hurt, emptiness and sadness felt by so many of you here today. Yet, as a Christian, the Bible promises us through Jesus' words that he would send the Holy Spirit who would do many things, include the, one of those is be a comforter. Let us allow God to comfort us today. Pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the comforter who has come to give us peace. Be with the family. And, Lord, let us hold fast to the hope and assurance that we can be comforted as your followers and believers. In Christ's name. Amen. We'll now have a song picked by the family for the occasion, Riverbank. If there ever was a morning when the fish might bite, it would be right now. Any other time we'd have done had our lines cast out. Sipping on a jug of mama's sweet iced tea, catching them old cats. Why couldn't today be like that? I wish this was a riverbank instead of a graveyard. Wish we were sitting and fishing and this wouldn't be so hard it Was my favorite thing that we used to do But now we can't I wish you were here I wish this was a riverbank Remember the day when I baited my hook with a chunk of ham Got a big bite and he yanked the pole right out of my hands. Well, you jumped up and you grabbed the net and we both jumped in. Yeah, we got away. Oh, but we got him. Man, I wish this was a riverbank instead of a graveyard. Wish we were sitting and fishing, then this wouldn't be so hard. Was my favorite thing that we used to do, but now we can't. I wish you were here. I wish this was a riverbank. I know you wouldn't want me sitting around and being sad. You taught me better than that So I'm leaving now, gonna head on out And try to catch a few And while I'm there I'll cast a line for you I wish this was a riverbank 
instead of a graveyard. I wish we were sitting and fishing and this wouldn't be so damn hard. It was my favorite thing that we used to do, but now we can't. I wish you were here. I wish you were here. I wish you were here. I wish this was a river bank. I will now read statements prepared by Jeremy and Kimberly. My dad was an amazing man. There is nothing he wouldn't do for anyone. I can honestly never think of a time that someone said anything bad about him. He was there for everyone, family or not. He would always do anything he could to help you always. He said he didn't have very many friends, well, between his home family, work family, and fishing family. He was loved by many. He loved Grandma and Papa so much, and Uncle Ray and Joni. There's nothing he wouldn't have done for them. He was also an amazing husband to Kimberly. He definitely did his part, and some he was all sometimes, and he was always there for her, just like a man was supposed to, and loved his children with a love stronger than any can imagine. From buying them candy at Tony's to making sure they had Christmas, he wouldn't let a child do without. I think that's why he was such a good dad to me. He was always there for me, and in 25 years, there's not even one time he was never there for me. He was the best dad there ever will be. He is why I share the same love for fishing as him. That was our father and son bonding time. That was what we did, and it's going to be hard to cast a line without thinking of him. But when I do, every cast will be for him. It feels like a bad dream. But unfortunately, it's not. Life goes on. But this isn't goodbye. It's I'll see you later. Those were Jeremy's words. Kimberly writes, Most of you know him as J.R. I was introduced to him by his sister as Robbie, so that's what he will always be to me. When I first met Robbie 16 years ago, I thought, This man is too good to be true. But you know what? I was wrong. He was absolutely the best thing that could have ever happened to me. After a year of dating, he told me, hang on tight. You're fixing to have the best ride you've ever had for the rest of your life. And you know what? He was right. And we never looked back. He got to building the perfect house he always wanted. He then started to accumulate new toys to go along with it. Then those toys started getting newer and bigger. He called them his, quote, added necessities for when he gets older, end quote. He was always interested in finding a way of putting things into words. Most of you know that me, Jeremy, family, and fishing were his life. He would count down the days when he would retire from DeBose. He marked a tick on the calendar every day and would just look at me and smile. He even told me before this year's fishing season started that he knows he's good at fishing and him and Ray were going to take everybody's money this year and he couldn't wait to prove it otherwise. Most of you that knew him know that he made a tremendous impact somehow on your life. He was a very kind, caring, sympathetic, and genuine person. If you needed anything he had, 
he would not hesitate to make sure you got it. He was pretty much a what you see is what you get kind of person. He was very stern and fierce in his ways, but yet could turn into a teddy bear at the drop of a hat. But he would never let that be known. Every year at Christmas, he would get two or three family names at work that he knew were having a tough time around the holidays and would go shopping for the kids. He didn't want anyone to know he was doing this because he wanted it to be anonymous. So he would usually just leave bags of presents either at their doorstep or by their cars at work. This was my Robbie. I hate losing him so early. In my eyes, we had many more years of things to accomplish together. A piece of the puzzle to my heart has been taken away and can never be replaced. I literally can say that I have lost my best friend and soulmate. Robbie was my everything. He was my life. This has turned my world completely upside down. My life was such a roller coaster when he was in the hospital for these last 40 days. However, our last morning together, before he passed away, even though he was sedated and couldn't talk, I told him how much I loved him and that I would see him again. So you see, I know in my heart that he knew without a shadow of a doubt how much his wife loved him. He is going to be deeply missed, not only by his wife, son Jeremy, but also his family and friends. But don't worry, I know how he is. And I'm pretty sure he's already found some lakes and rivers to fish in. He now has that piece of a puzzle to my heart with him always. I also take comfort in knowing that he will forever be watching over me. I cannot even begin to tell you how much I miss him already. But I do know that I will see him again someday. So, until then, Robbie, thank you for these last 16 years. And yes, you were right. It has been a wonderful ride. I love you. And now I'll go fish in heaven. We're here today for memorial service. Memorial services serve many purposes, and I'm just going to cover a few of them. The first purpose of a memorial service is to remember. The first purpose of a memorial service is to remember. The Hebrew word for it is zakar. It means what it means in English, but it also means to imply to burn it into your memory see we have memorial services because we need to remember someone and today we're here to remember Robbie the second purpose of a memorial service is to comfort the brokenhearted as I mentioned earlier the Bible promised us when Jesus rose from the dead and before he ascended into heaven after 40 days he told his followers his disciples his believers that when he ascended unto heaven, he would send the Holy Spirit to be our comforter. Now, this is not a very profound statement at all, but you don't need comfort when you're comfortable. But we as Christians, those who follow the Nazarene, who serve him and submit to him as their Lord and Savior, we have the ability to be comforted by God, and the Holy Spirit is there. The Holy Spirit will comfort us in this season. Because there is comfort in the memories of how J.R., Robbie, as your husband, your dad, your brother, your uncle, and your friend, touched your life and made it different. There is comfort in a memorial service to remember that death is not the end. The Bible is clear that our soul, who we really are, will spend eternity somewhere. That our body is just a shell, like a glove of who we really are. There is comfort in knowing that you can see those who have a relationship with Christ again. That if you're a Christian and live it, you can see your loved ones again in eternity. The third purpose of a memorial service is to prepare the living. This is one of the things that I don't like talking about, even as a minister. 
But the truth of the matter is, in reality, we, we believe there's going to be a great catching away. We, we commonly call it the rapture. It's not, the word rapture is not in the Bible. But Second Thessalonians talks about there'll be a great trumpet and those who serve Christ will be taken together in the air and those that have died in Christ will burst forth from their graves and we'll all meet him and go to. So we're going to spend eternity somewhere and we're, unless the rapture happens, we're all going to die. A memorial service is to help us remember to be prepared. We are not given a choice about whether we meet death or even when we meet death. The only choice we have is how we meet death. There's a story in the Gospels of John that I'm not going to read the whole narrative, um, but it's a situation that many have found themselves in, and it's in John chapter 11. Jesus' very good friend Lazarus has passed away. And some of, they're, they're some of his best friends, and his sisters are Mary and Martha. And if you, if you know your Bible, uh, in, in, in John chapter 11, Lazarus has passed away and has been dead four days. And Mary and Martha are terribly upset. And go out to meet Jesus. Uh, you go home and read John chapter 11 because th this, is, this is not a funeral. This is a memorial service. I'm not going to go into a long narrative. And, and to be honest with you, can I be honest with you? Kimberly, doesn't need, Kimberly and Jeremy and the family don't need to sit for a long time listening to me just talk about John chapter 11. But in John chapter 11, Jesus addresses for us and throughout the New Testament the greatest problem humanity has faced since their creation, and that is death. Jesus addresses the greatest problem, and that is death. Their circumstances are particularly easy for us to understand. Their loved one has passed away, and the sisters are devastated. Their friends surround them to offer them comfort. That's in verse 19. And I want to say that there is no time in a family's life where there's greater need for expression of love and sympathy. Because with cards, letters, flowers, food, and phone calls and spoken words, friends can let their love be known. And every time we spend with families such as this, there's a silent and eloquent way of expressing love and sympathy. Can I challenge you today? You not be angry with me? Um, I don't have Kimberly's permission to say this. I don't have Jeremy's permission to say this, but I'm going to say it. Um, please remember in the days and the weeks and the months afterwards when you have a great memory of Robbie to send her a message, send him a message, send him a picture of the, the biggest bass you've ever caught. Because part of memorial is the memory, to remember the impact they made on you. Also, don't be angry with them. Here we go. Don't be angry with them when they don't text you or call you back immediately. We are made to mourn, and sometimes we need time. Don't allow the enemy to infect you with worry about why no one's called me back. Jesus talks about the greatest problem. He addresses death, and there is life after the grave. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, and, and that, that's more than just mental assent, but those who follow after me, who believe my commandments, who follow me as a Christian, even though he be dead, yet shall he live. Jesus said the word I am, echoing the words that God said to Moses way on back in the book of Exodus where he said I am to Moses. It was a statement of deity and the self-existence of God. His own reassurance, he was indeed the God in the flesh. Jesus not only addresses the largest and most scary problem humanity's face, death, but he also gives us the world's greatest offer. I am the resurrection and the life, and he who follows me, he who believes in me, he who serves me shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to God the Father except through me. This promise is limited to those who follow the Nazarene. The ultimate result is that believers and the dead shall rise again. The Apostle Paul said of his own life and faith, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength to do his work. He considered me unworthy and appointed me to serve him. Jesus asked a specific question. Do you believe this? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the resurrection? Do you believe that Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life for humanity, and that he is the only way to eternal life? Let me tell you something. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping this thing up. If Robbie could speak to you today, he would tell you where you spend eternity is the most important question you need to answer in your life. Ken, I just went to church yesterday for Easter. I don't need to hear this. Well, I'm telling you anyway because I got the microphone. The most important, Robbie would tell you, the most important decision you make on this side of eternity is where you're going to spend the other side of eternity. There may, I'm not willing to argue about it, and, and I'm willing to be wrong. There may have been a time you did not exist, but there will never be a time from now on you, do, you will not exist, and you will spend eternity in heaven or hell. And that's kind of strong to say, but that's what the Bible teaches. And Jr. would tell you today if he had a chance, the most important decision you make is where you spend eternity I'm going to address the following to the family as I close I have nothing to say that will take away your hurt there will be well-intentioned people who will tell you not to cry because it will make you feel badly there will be well-intentioned people who will tell you that you should cry and you should let it consume you and if I can be bold, I don't think there's any small, too small children in here. That will be well-intentioned people who say S-T-U-P-I-D things to you. Everybody here can spell, right? There's well-intentioned people who say stuff like that. I just want you to know there's a healthy balance of crying and there's a healthy balance of rejoicing. The Bible says humans are made to rejoice and are made to mourn. So it is perfectly okay today as part of a season of mourning and a day of reflection to remember who Robbie was and who he was to you. You should feel safe to grieve, but Jesus said we are to rejoice with those that rejoice and mourn with those that mourn. Today, we're here to show memory and support to J.R., Robbie's family, during this incredible loss in the lives of everyone he impacted, touched, and had an, an effect on. Pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name. Whew. Help us today, Father. God, in Jesus' name, give us comfort. Give us peace. And, and Lord, let us seriously consider the most important question, and that is of eternity. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that's promised to comfort us and be with us during these times and seasons. And we'll be careful to give you glory, honor, and praise for it in Christ's name. Amen. In just a moment, we're going to close with one song, one final song. Fishing in the Sky by Travis Smith, dedicated to Jeremy by Kimberly. After that, Ronnie, we'll let the camera continue to run. And if the family needs to leave, please allow them to leave. If they feel comfortable staying around to greet you, please understand that they, may, they, they might do that, they might not. You understand everybody needs their own way of grieving, and you can send them a message later. After the song, we will be officially dismissed. Thank you so much. Yeah.
happy I wouldn't wish him here Oh, how I miss him so It's been a long, hard year And God, he loves and talks to me So I won't be alone I long so much to be with him I can't wait to go I've got a silver boat that sparkles It's lined with fleece of white I've got a rod reel that's made of gold The fish they always buy I've got a cabin by the lake The shade trees that grow so high I can't wait till you get here I'll take you fishing Fishing in the sky I know that I will see him In heaven when I die I wonder what he's doing now In his sweet by and by We'll have a silver boat that sparkles It'll be a line of fleece of white have some rotten reels that are made of gold The fish will always bite We'll have a cabin by the lake The shade trees will grow so high There'll be crickets 